Hello folks, this is Engineer 775. Alert Zone 1. Alert Zone 1. Let me turn that off so we can continue this video. That was a sensor going off um, that is powered by batteries. Batteries are probably the weakest link for, for us as preppers. Anybody preparing, you know that. And uh, buying good batteries is great, but you know how expensive they are and they don't last very long depending on the equipment. So what I've got here on the table is a, a way to charge your batteries. I'll talk about that in the different battery types that I'm using. And I have radios, we've got uh, perimeter sensors, we've got um, even little computers, uh, flashlights, um, I've showed you before, and um, even in night vision, uh, laser aiming devices, uh, EOTEX, and those kinds of things that I'm using either CR123s or AA's. A lot of the things I do have, like my flashlights, are great with the 123s. They last a long time, but they still fail. They still still um, have a, a dura uh, expiration to them. So what I've been doing is using things like Tenergy um, 123s, uh, recharging them, and also the Sanyo Eneloops. You can see the Eneloops system here is charging away. You see it flashing there. So it can charge double A's and triple A's. Charging one, two, threes. I'm doing this all, by the way, off of the Practical Preppers crank a -watt that I also have hooked to solar, but I can hand crank it and or use the bicycle. But even in my radios, back to my radios, I've got AA battery packs in these. I've got um, the sensor. I turned my radio off so you didn't have to hear it, but these sensors have AA's. I've got driveway probes that take one, two, threes. So I'm using Tenergy. 123 rechargeable batteries and the Sanyo Eneloop uh, double A's for recharging. Um, the Tenergies are about 1,000 times you can recharge those, and the Eneloops are about 1,500 on them. Now, you got to take into account that it takes a long time to charge. Like this little charger, make sure you figure out how long it takes. This little charger takes almost eight hours to recharge um, those double A's. And the Tenergies, it depends on the type of charger and didn't even get into that. This is kind of the lower end slow chargers. You can get some faster chargers. But make sure you have enough batteries and you have the ability to have a sustainable plan. If it's your communication plan, your security plan, um, from flashlights to shortwave radios, you know, how are you gonna charge them? So what we're using is solar, port portable solar, and hand crank human power devices. Solar uh, in the Sun Runner, a hand crank device with solar, the crank a -wop and bicycle, you've seen some of that. And so I think it's just important that we start practicing how to do this now. Keep all your devices running. Use rechargeable batteries to do that. There are some problems. You get into too many lumens on your flashlights, you have uh, a problem that the rechargeables just don't last that long. So when you get over about 350 lumens on a light, um, they just don't last long. They work, but not for long. The other thing about the nickel metal highlight batteries, these Eneloops, they um, they don't put out as much power. So we've seen the, the ability, you can take, like these take six batteries, that you can take the trays out of those, those six tray batteries, and I saw another prepper do this, put an eight tray battery in his. Um, the neat thing about the nickel metal highlight, when it's cold, they last longer than the lithium ion. Uh, found that out through t through testing uh, these sensors. So uh, if you have your perimeter defense in place, perimeter security, these are battery eaters. Depending on the amount of traffic, of course, and how many times they're going going off. Um, maybe you're just using lithium ion. I'm charging the, the Oshing radios off of the crank a watt as well, and um, so it's you can you can take a lithium ion approach. You can do another lithium ion battery. You can buy backup batteries that way. So work through um, your security system, work through your communication plans. Are, are you going to be able to keep your batteries going for a long period of time? And really the best way that I've found to do that is with solar energy and just have these battery tenders charging your batteries and so that when you need the power, you can pull it out. So that's about it. I, I really like the Eneloops. They give you a lot of flexibility. Um, I did this in my hot... The, the shower video I've put up recently, you put the double A's in these and then um, you can make C's and D's and obviously double A's and triple A's and so it's a, 
it's a good it's a good plan. Um, the Tenergies are new to me. I know they've been around for a long time, um, but I'm uh, doing some testing because I'm, uh, the D-Ball laser, the uh, EOTech, my flashlight takes two, and the Dakota Alarm Perimeter uh, Driveway Probe takes CR123s as well. So. Um, just make sure you can keep your battery plan going. Your, make sure your battery plan is sustainable. And if you've got any questions, fire away. But uh, know that there are ways to do it. Human power, solar power. Um, you can use generators. You don't want to fire up generators to charge these small batteries. So I, I would highly recommend a solar um, system to do that. Okay. I want to say one last thing about all of this equipment. And it has to do with the batteries. It's usually overlooked in a lot of prepper items. And I'll do a separate video because there's so many things that we use that have batteries. And um, I want to talk about rechargeables a little bit. Uh, the PVS has AA. My EOTech's got a CR123. The D-Ball has a CR123. Flashlight CR123. Um, but I have a lot of AA stuff as well, obviously, the N um, NVS. Um, and uh, even the camera. This video is brought to you, brought to you by uh, rechargeable batteries. And I've been using them a lot. I've been using Sanyo Eneloops, and I've been using the Tenergy 123s. Um, and I've been charging these using solar, and that's to make this all sustainable. So if you need to keep your gizmos going, and I'm not only using it in this equipment you see, but in many other things. So I'm going to kind of lay out all the different equipment that I use rechargeables for. And of course, they're not as good sometimes, especially when you get into the high lumen flashlights. These uh, these rechargeables aren't as good, um, but I keep experimenting, trying. So far, the Tenergies and the Eneloops are pretty darn good batteries, and they just take a long time to recharge. So you need a lot of batteries. Now you can buy good quality name batteries, and um, but I recommend having some rechargeables and practicing how long it takes to charge. How many do I need to keep my security set sensors up and running? My, my radios up and running. I'm using the Eneloops and my um, Ocean radios and the uh, PVS Eneloops and YouTube is running off of Eneloops today. Okay, you can see the, the we're charging all these batteries right now and we're down about 12.3. That's 50% discharge. I do not like to go lower than that so then I can start charging and, and raise that up. And you don't need to go crazy, but you can see I'm I'm keeping up. I'm I'm ahead of what is coming out of uh, the battery with all that I'm charging. So and then the bicycle is another great way to hook up to this and, and use it. And it's dark out now, so my solar isn't doing this. So this is the wrong time of day to do this. You want to make hay while the sun shines. And so my solar panel, it's uh, five after five o'clock. So. The best time to charge your batteries is when the sun is shining. I just wanted to show you what I'm using. So use solar, use your use your own energy, use a bicycle, whatever it takes. Okay, engineer seven seven five, sign it off. Here's just uh, another quick variation. Took my mountain bike and took the wheel off. Um, here's my original wheel. And I've got a dedicated little road wheel that I just pop off, pop off the original, stick this one on there, and then I've just got the the box bungee corded to the the trainer. So it's uh, pretty simple. You can see me turning, turning them with hand, just by hand right now, and it uh, runs it. Been charging a bunch of Eneloop batteries off the crank a lot. And I do use a solar through that plug over there to back feed. But anyway, I just wanted to show you the another variation using a mountain bike, just taking the tire off and getting a dedicated wheel. It really does need a narrow, narrow tire to fit inside that pulley. It works much better that way. Anyway, just in a little variation to the video.